Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Naomi Hausman. I'm Director of Institutional Advancement at Gratz College, and I'm thrilled to be here tonight. Thank you for joining us. This is the fifth and final webinar in the series of webinars featuring students and recent alum of Gratz. Uh, with the webinar series, what we're aiming to do is uh, introduce our community uh, globally, whoever may be tuning in from wherever they are, to introduce folks to just some of the many uh, grad students and alum who are doing innovative work in the world and are passionate about their work and representing different programs of Gratz College. So the webinar series is also uh, a part of our giving, uh, Gratz Giving Countdown to Commencement, which is a campaign to help engage all of our community in giving back to the college in order to support our students. Uh, all the funds that we're raising this week in the countdown go into the President's Scholarship Fund, which supports students at the uh, current students who have financial need. So it's a great cause and a great way to contribute. And the way you can contribute is by making a tax deductible gift for a virtual seat at commencement. Uh, each seat is $20.20 in honor of our 2020 grads. And of course you can buy as many seats as you want. Um, and it's in a virtual auditorium, so there's plenty of seats for everybody. It's an online commencement, and Paul will talk about that in just a moment. Um, but you can make that gift in honor of a graduate, a faculty member, one of our honorees, or somebody that you love, whoever you would like. And we, we are filling up that virtual auditorium. We're almost there, actually. Um, so uh, tonight, onto our program, I'm very, very uh, thrilled to welcome our feature presenter, um, Craig Vandermark, and uh, he will be uh, introduced formally by Dave Malter, who uh, leads one of our programs at Gratz. And so I'll let him take the uh, take care of the introduction. But for now, I just wanted to say before we get into the presentation, a few notes about the um, the program, which is a short one. We'll only be together for 30 minutes, um, but during that time, we'll keep everybody's video off and keep everybody muted so we can focus on our speakers. However, we will have time for chat and question and answer. So use, your, use the chat room in, uh, at any time in the next 30 minutes to share a comment, um, send a message, or ask a question. And we'll take some time at the very end to, to pose those questions to Craig. Um, and so now, without further ado, it is my pleasure to welcome the president of Gratz College, Dr. Paul Finkelman, who is going to welcome everybody and say a few words. Welcome, Paul. Thank you, Naomi. Uh, this is indeed a special year for Gratz. We're celebrating our 125th anniversary. We began in 1895. We're also celebrating our 120th commencement. Uh, it took us a year to get off the ground, and then four years later, people started graduating. Uh, that will be this Sunday evening online. All of you can come. I hope you all will. Uh, it's a chance to welcome our graduates and to welcome them as alum and to honor them and also to hear a, uh, an address by Dr. Stephen Pilch, who will be receiving an honorary degree from Gratz College. Dr. Pilch is at the University of Pennsylvania in the Graduate School of Education. And it is appropriate that Dr. Pilch gives the commencement address this year because this is the first year that we have students who have earned our new doctorate in education. So we will be giving EDD degrees to people as well as MAs and BAs. Um, now I would like, uh, oh, I should add, we're also honoring at our graduation, Ernie Collins, who has been with Gratz um, for more than 40 years. And he is going to receive the Honorary Alumni Award. Uh, he's been at Gratz long enough that he ought to be considered an alum. Uh, he's been a part of almost every event at Gratz in one way or another uh, for four decades. Uh, and now I'd like to introduce Dave Malta. Dave is the director of the Gratz College Masters of Camp Administration and Leadership, and he is also the director of our uh, Masters in Education program. Uh, he will be introducing Craig Vandemark, who teaches in the uh, Masters of Education program and is also a graduate of that program. Uh, Dave earned his BA from James Madison University and later an MA in English from Montclair State University. Uh, Dave is currently 
finishing his doctorate at Gratz College in Education and Leadership. Uh, and so he will soon uh, be Dr. Walter. Um, Dave has had a career in camp administration, running camps, uh, organizing camps. Uh, I've tried to get him to teach me how to pitch a tent, which I never learned in Boy Scout camp, but it hasn't worked so far. Uh, maybe in the future it will. Um, Dave is also deeply rooted in all, in many aspects of the American Jewish community, and he uh, works with a number of Jewish camps around the country, but he also works with many other camps as well. He is uh, the camp guy. And in addition to that, of course, he runs our master's in education program and brings in people like Craig, not only as students, but also as teachers. Uh, Dave has published articles in trade journals and on industrial websites. He's a frequent contributor to expert online training uh, and now serves as the conference chair for the American Camping Association Keystone Fall Retreat, retreat uh, and is involved in many similar activities. Um, Dave was, uh, came to Gratz about two years ago. Uh, I was delighted when he accepted our offer to come here and I am now delighted to turn this over to Dave to thank him for all he's done in education, all he has done in the camp program, and just as importantly, for planning and designing and organizing our online commencement this year. Because again, he was bring, able to bring in his skills and his knowledge and his contacts so that when we determined that we had to do our commencement online, Dave stepped up and said, I know the people who can do it. I know how to get it done. And he's done it. And thank you very much, Dave, for all that you do for us. I give it to Dave Mulder. You have to unmute yourself, Dave. Can you hear me now? Somebody give me a heads up. Craig, am I good? Yes, I can hear you, Dave. Thank you. Sorry, it was my head. Uh, so as, as Dr. Finkelman said, I run the master's in education program as well as the master's in camp administration and leadership, both master's degrees. Uh, the master's in education program is a 30 credit program, uh, fully online here at Gratz with several different tracks that you can take, really trying to focus on being ahead of the curve, if not up with the trends. For example, we're now adding a couple new courses this coming fall term on trauma in the classroom, as well as digital online learning. So uh, we've, we're really excited about some of the new faculty that we're bringing on board. And the camp program is, is fairly new to Gratz. I've been running it for about eight years at a different university. I've brought it over to Gratz now. Uh, we have our second cohort starting in the fall. It's really exciting. It's a 36 credit master's program uh, that really teaches uh, beginning or mid-career camp directors how to improve their practice. So enough about me. Uh, I really am here to introduce Craig Vandermark. And instead of doing the traditional read his bio, uh, I'm going to ask Craig to really just start by telling us a little bit about how he became a student at Gratz, his experience as a student, um, and that progression into becoming an adjunct and, and the courses that he teaches now. So Craig, the floor is yours. All right. Thank you, Dave. Uh, yeah, just to go back uh, a little bit from my past, uh, I was a personal trainer um, before I became a teacher. So that was my first first job out of college was uh, working at a law firm. And I trained, um, I had clients from the ages of seven all the way up to 84. Uh, so I really enjoyed that. Um, but there was, a, there was something missing. And I, I loved uh, being with uh, teaching younger children. And I thought that that would be a good fit for me. So I went back to school. And I got, my, uh, I got my teacher cert from Westchester University. And that led me to getting a job at Pensbury uh, School District, which is in uh, Bucks County. And from there, I, uh, I was asking uh, some of the teachers, you know, where is everyone going to get take some grad classes? And the first college that I heard of was Gratz. And at that time, it was back in 2012. And Gratz was partnered with RTC, Regional Training Center, at the time. So the courses were actually in hotel conference rooms. Um, and the great thing about that is they were offered on weekends. It was offered 
on a Friday night, a Saturday, and a Sunday, which was perfect for teachers because after a long day with your students, the last thing you want to do sometimes is, is head into a classroom and, and, uh, and, and try to learn some more things, try to stuff some more things into your brain. So, uh, so we, we and all and teachers all enjoyed uh, having those grass classes, and many of us took them from uh, from Pensbury, where I'm at. So, uh, so that's how I started, um, Dave. I started there in 2012. I finished up in 2016. I got my master's degree um, from there, and then um, about a year, almost a year later, um, I started teaching um, at Gratz, uh, which I've thoroughly enjoyed over the last three years. And tell me just a couple of the courses that you teach here at Gratz. Yeah, so I just wrapped up, uh, wrapping up this week actually with a uh, teacher and wellness course uh, that, that I, I teach. I'll be offering that, I think in the fall as well, Dave, um, in October, the end of October, that course is offered. Uh, but I also teach two classes uh, that have to do with movement in the classroom and how important that is for our students that we're gonna touch on tonight. So, um, so one is called kinesthetics across the curriculum and the other one is teaching through movement. Perfect. Thanks, Craig. And we're very happy to have you. Craig is probably our most popular adjunct at the moment. People love his classes, especially when they were able to come on, on campus, but he's done an amazing job of moving some of these movement courses uh, online, uh, where he, they used to be hybrid courses on the weekends. He's been able to replicate the experience online, which is a huge testament to the kind of teacher that he is. Uh, we love his, having him as part of our our. Uh, our team. He's also speaking at commencement. He is representing the Alumni Association. So when you tune in on Sunday, you'll get to hear a great speech from, from Craig. So before we get into kind of the specifics about movement and brain breaks and the main topic, I think we can't avoid uh, the past six months uh, as a teacher, right? And what's been going on in the classroom or not in the classroom. Uh, so kind of I just want to find out what have the past few months been like for you? Um, you know, talk about the subjects that you teach, the grade, and, and how you've been able to manage that moving online. Right. So uh, that's, a, that's a great question because uh, I'll tell you what, the teachers have, have gone through a roller coaster ride uh, since March, since the pandemic, you know, hit. Um, it's been, it's been wild, a wild ride, uh, I'll tell you that. So I teach uh, physical education at the elementary level. So I have uh, kindergarten through fifth grade, um, which is extremely difficult for me to teach. Um, from remote learning, uh, <laughs> that's it's tough uh, for me uh, personally being able to do that. Um, but you know what? We're trying to make it work. So if, if you if we rewind back to March, I think all teachers were in panic mode uh, come March because we were asked to uh, dive into this technology world that a lot of us were not prepared uh, to, to be in, uh, and we had to dive into it quickly within a day. <laughs> so. Uh, so I'll tell you, what, it was panic city for teachers, I think, um, all over the place, transitioning into the remote learning world, um, and for parents, too. Uh, parents had to, had to switch gears and, and, and try to, you know, work with uh, their work schedule to be home for their kids, and uh, it, was, it, was, it was pretty wild, I'll tell you that. And uh, once we got through that and we were into summer, it was a little bit of relief for teachers. We were okay. We made it to the end, and now we get a little chance to breathe. So I think everyone really enjoyed July. But in the back of our mind, we, we knew that um, August was coming, and that meant, uh, you know, we're, here we are again in in similar situation. Uh, many districts are, are going hybrid, which means that students are going in twice a week and they're home for three days. And there's many models that are, like Pensbury, which the first two semesters that take us to the end of January, we're doing fully remotely. So, uh, you know, so I think we're back into that uh, a little anxious, a little anxiety uh, with teachers uh, trying to figure out uh, the technology piece of this. But I think the thing that is the hardest thing, I think, is, is not having that human connection, Dave. Like we're, we're so used and programmed to be in the classroom, making those human connections on the first week of school with those students and not being able to see them face to face, um, giving a high five, uh, right. letting them see, you know, uh, your smile, letting them see that you're going to be there for them is, uh, is tough to do over a computer. So. I think we're all just going to make the best of the situation. Um, and like today, we had, a, we had a Google Meet today at my school and it, with the 80 teachers in my building, and it did not go smoothly. Uh, we were sent <laughs> to different rooms, and it was chaos. So we kind of just laughed, laughed it off and said, hey, it wouldn't be a bad thing if we start the year off with our kids like this to say things might not be you know, right. perfect. But yeah, and sometimes you know, that's okay to not be perfect as that's much exactly as right. yep, yep. 
Um, and so that kind of leads us into really the main point of, of our talk tonight. And I'm going to kind of let you go with it a little bit, but we've talked a lot about movement and brain breaks. And I think what we've been seeing is not just with school, but with, with being home. Some parents are really struggling with their children, you know, focusing and having to be online all the time, whether it's school or other activities. And, and that's going to continue, whether it's in a hybrid fashion, whether it's in fully online, like Pensbury is doing for the time being and other districts as well. So you, you always talk and, and, and teach this idea of movement and brain breaks. And I want you to just kind of walk us through what, what brain breaks are, kind of what the science is behind it. And, and why they're so important, especially now, as we move into this online learning where, where kids are gonna be back behind screens for the next few months, if not longer. Right, so yeah, so uh, the same thought about that is, you know, they say that sitting, right, is the, is the new smoking, you know, yeah. of the 70s and 80s, right? <laughs> so, yeah. uh, and, and now what are we doing? We're sitting in front of a computer, right, for hours upon hours upon hours. So. Uh, so, but first I want to just touch on the, the science behind it, because if, if we don't talk about the science behind it, people will be asking, well, is this really, you know, uh, something that's, that can happen? Is this something that is really going to help the students? And yes, there's a lot of science behind it. So I want to talk about that first. Um, so the science behind it, um, Brain Breaks, is twofold. Um, but first, I would be remiss if I did not mention the key players um, behind movement and the brain. So the key players in the movement started um, back with John Ratty, who um, wrote a book called Spark. Um, and this was one of the best books that I, I have ever read. It's fantastic. Uh, he talks about um, the revolutionary new science behind exercise in the brain. That's the, that's the subtitle of this, but fantastic read. Um, if, if this conversation uh, interests you and you'd like to go out and get it, it's a great book. That, that kind of helped. Um, two books uh, came out about two years after that. Um, and this one was called The Kinesthetic Classroom. And this was written by Mike uh, Pizzola and Tracy Lengel. And then they followed up with a book called Ready, Set, Go. Um, and this is The Kinesthetic Classroom 2.0. So they came out with two books that um, took John Ratty's information from the book Spark and put it into things that we can use in the classroom. So they were, the, they were the big players in this. This is not something that, you know, was just made up. It was, uh, it was done in the lab. It was science. And the story kind of goes like this um, with that. So in John Ratty's book, um, he talked about three things. I just want to cover three quick things about the science behind it. The first one he talked about uh, took place. It was a study that was done in Naperville High School, uh, which is in uh, Illinois. And they had the phys ed program led by uh, Paul Zentarski, they started a club called the Zero Hour PE Club. And what that was was students volunteered to exercise before their first class. They had them set up in uh, exercise bikes, treadmills. They used the track around the school. Um, and they got their heart rate up for about 20 to 30 minutes before they sent them off to the first, school, first class. And that was the objective and was to actually give the students a boost in the reading ability and with the rest of their subjects throughout the day. So that was the goal behind it. So what happened with that study was, I just wanna read quickly an, a, a paragraph from an article about that year and what happened in Naperville, was that the students at Naperville decided to take a trend in international mathematics and science studies. It's called the Tim's test. And this is given around the world. So the United States has notoriously done poorly on this test. Whereas in Asia countries, nearly half of the students were in the top tier. Only 7% of US students hit that mark. In Naperville, 97% of the eighth graders took that test. And on the science section, they finished just ahead of Singapore for number one in the world. And on the math section, they were number six in the world. All of these changes can be attributed to their innovative exercise program, which was done before their first class. So that was one point in the book I thought that was fantastic, um, that it did work for them exercising before they took their first test. Number two, the second part of that book, um, when you exercise, the first thing that happens, and we all know this, we've heard this so many times, neurotransmitters, right, are released in our brain, keeping us awake and alert. Endorphins, right, serotonin, which is our mood, right, increases our mood. Uh, dopamine, improving our motivation, focus, and learning. That's stuff that we already knew. He talked about that in the book, but... The thing that, um, that was most interesting about that book um, he talked about was what we didn't know, 
And that was that exercise can stimulate nerve cells to grow and connect, creating the perfect environment for learning. John Raddy discovered that this is possible because of a protein that is released in our brain during exercise. We have a protein that is released every time that we exercise and we get our heart rate up for, for at least three, four, five, six minutes, more pre preferably up to 20 minutes, but we can get it up in this area in two and three minutes. That, that protein is called BDNF, brain-derived neurotrophic factor. And this allows brain cells to stay alive so they connect with other brain cells. And this creates an environment in which the brain is ready, willing, and able to learn. So I thought that was really interesting to read, um, you know, not only about those neurotransmitters, but about that protein that's released in our body um, that is, helps brain cells stay alive and connect, to make those connections, uh, to help us, uh, help us learn. And that's what I got from that book, Spark. And that, that's just the science behind that, Dave, before we get into some strategies for remote learning. I thought that was really interesting. Yeah, that's really interesting. So we have just like a couple minutes left. I know the time flies yep. on the... So, just in the next two or three minutes, give us a couple of like your top strategies for how this works in a remote learning kind of classroom that you've seen successful. Okay, so I have three strategies and this goes for parents, goes for students, um, anyone that is going to be dealing with any sort of remote learning, um, uh, whether you're a teacher, a parent, a student, I think all three of these things are, are, are really good for us. Um, the first thing is to start the day with exercise, just like I, I just spoke about, right? Um, exercise is the one thing that most successful people do every day. They start their day off with exercise, whether it's running, walking, lifting weights, doing yoga, um, put on an exercise video on YouTube. It will provide you with up to four hours extra productivity every single day, which equals about 65% more productive than those who don't exercise. So wow. don't hit the snooze button, get up and, and get moving uh, before you do anything else. Number two, um, Brain breaks between subjects. So when, when teachers you know, are, are sitting down with students and they're synchronous on the computer, they're live with the students and they get done a science lesson, right? Allow those students a few minutes before you transition into math to get that brain break. We need it. We need to get up out of our, out of our seats and allow our, our brain a chance to basically just absorb what we just learned. So if we dive right from math to science, what we learned in math is, is going to go right out the door if we jump right into science because our brain is going to focus right away on that science lesson. We need those few minutes. So brain breaks are great. If you have five, 10 minutes to get up, um, Go Noodle is a fantastic website that has a ton of two to three minute um, you know, uh, uh, videos on there. YouTube has a bunch of them. Go out, go for a quick walk. All those things are terrific. Um, so they offer short bursts of energy, those brain breaks. So make sure you do that between subjects, all right? Uh, last thing about this, and I'll get to my last point here, Dave, is that teachers, if you have a 30-minute class, 20 after 20 minutes, right, you should get the students up for a minute or two. Why? It will give, it will give you those last eight minutes back, right, and then some. Because they'll, if you'll lose them, if you go straight through from a half an hour, you know how we feel if we sit in a Zoom meeting for half an hour, right? Can you imagine being eight years old, nine <laughs> years old, even high school kids? So get them up between subjects, get them moving for a few minutes. That is crucial. And my last point is, um, can specific physical movements stimulate and prepare the brain for learning? And the answer is yes, right? Movements that cross the midline of our body, straight down so the midline the demonstration of our body. Part. I love the demonstration part. Yeah, You're gonna, no. straight down. <laughs> uh, as well as like spinning, balancing, jumping. Right, anything that crosses the midline of our brain, it connects the right side of our brain, the left side of our body and vice versa. Um, this allows brain cells to communicate more effectively with one another, so cognitive abilities are enhanced. Right, so keep that in mind um, that you, we need to do movements. What are some things that we can try? Uh, we can try the ear nose switch, which is easy, taking your right hand, putting on your nose, left hand crosses over to your ear, and then you're trying to switch. So your left hand's on your ear, right? Simple things, and then you gotta try and go fast and do it, do it five times fast, right? You can do the elbow, the elbow touch on each hand, go back and forth, right? We can do shoulder taps. We can stand up and we can do elbow to knee, elbow to knee, things like that. So little movements.
Go ahead, David. Sorry. Things you can do any time, right? So if you notice, if you're a parent at home yep. who's watching their kid do online learning and you're realizing their focus is off, um, they're not they're not really paying attention or they're 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 kind of losing it. You can you can stop them at the end of the lesson and and before you turn on the next video or or go to the next activity, you can kind of do these things with them really quickly, right? You only need a couple of minutes to do that. That's all you need. If you go on the YouTube um, uh, right away, you, there is, and you look up cross lateral movements, um, right. you're, there's going to be a ton of videos that you can pull from that are, some are short, some are long. You only have to do a few of them, Dave. You don't need 15 minutes. You can do two or three minutes of these, right? So connect both sides of your brain, right? We have our left side, our logical side, our math side. We have our right side, which is our creative side, our art side, our music side. We need both working right. together um, to be very effective. So that's one way to engage both sides of our brain. That's great. So um, I think we're out of time. We're just just about there. That was great. You already have some comments on here about people want you to come to the house. And <laughs> uh, so a little side hustle here for you, Craig, uh, <laughs> like you needed more work. Yeah. Uh, so if anybody has any other questions for Craig, um, you can ask them now. You can put them in the chat. Um, you can always get in touch with, with him uh, at his Gratz email address. So it's, so it's at cvandemark at gratz.edu. Yes, it is. Uh, you can email me, dmalter at gratz.edu. You can get in touch with Naomi. Um, take one of his courses if you want. Um, you, know, you can take non-matriculated courses here at Gratz or come get your master's degree um, in education. And Craig uh, usually teaches two courses per semester for us, so one fall A and one fall B, typically spring, and he teaches in the summer as well. So uh, definitely if you're interested in more and, and learning more about this, uh, reach out, get in touch. Uh, Craig, thank you for your time. Uh, well, we look forward to seeing you at a virtual commencement on Sunday uh, when you address all of us. So uh, thank you all very much. Naomi, I will turn it back over to you. Great. Thank you, Dave. Uh, that was wonderful. And Craig, huge thanks to you. Thank you for doing this, for giving back to Gratz uh, like you do in so many ways. Uh, we are eternally grateful um, and uh, love your passion and your great energy. It's clear that you love what you do and it's infectious. Uh, so I'm certainly taking notes today and uh, we'll be uh, helping my kids make their right brain, left brain connections uh, when school starts next week. So I appreciate that. And uh, thanks to all of you who uh, participated tonight. It's um, wonderful to see folks uh, coming from near and far to learn a little bit about uh, the great things happening at Gratz. And um, like Paul and Dave said, I hope you participate on Sunday in our commencement. Um, make a gift if you feel so moved and uh, be a part of uh, all the good things happening at Gratz. So have a wonderful night and see you soon. Good night, everybody.